Hey there, I'm Zachary Quinto. And I'm John Scalzi. And we're going to be talking about John's new Audible original, Murder by Other Means. Yes. How's it going, John? It's going really well. I'm uh, things have been okay, even though we're in quarantine times. Uh, and uh, I've been busy writing and doing a whole bunch of stuff. How about you? Great. Um, yeah, you know, all things considered, um, I feel grateful and um, and productive, which is nice. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, where 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 are you? Where do you live? I live in rural Ohio, a little town called Bradford. I like to say okay. that a uh, traffic traffic jam here is three cars behind an Amish buggy. Uh huh. Got it. So sort of like <laughs> like central Pennsylvania, a little bit vibes, like Lancaster, yeah. sort of Amish country in PA, where I where I, I grew up in Pittsburgh. So I grew up actually where you are right now. I grew up in the LA area, right oh, by did? Claremont, actually. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah so. right, right. So it's been a while. It's been four years since uh since we last teamed up for for the dispatcher um yeah. and so did you know that you wanted this to be a series how, how how did it evolve um this world i didn't know that it was going to be a series i mean a lot of it really depends on how people responded to it and one of uh -huh. the things that I, i've been really grateful for has been honestly that uh, from the very beginning, people have really responded to the story and also responded to the audio performance of it. I mean, I think it's the success of the uh, story has been uniquely tied into the fact that it is you uh, who has been the, the voice of the series so far. So when uh, Audible came back to me and said, would you like to write another one in this universe? I was like, absolutely. And because it's nice to be able to set up a universe that is open-ended enough that you can sort of plug back into it um, three, four, however many years uh, down the line and basically hit the ground running for it. I felt very fortunate um, that yeah. people have responded enough to it. And l let me flip that back to you. I mean, when they came back to you uh, and said, hey, we're going to do the sequel. I mean, what was your thinking? What was your thoughts about that? Well, I was excited to kind of see where the story went. I found it to be such a unique world um, the the first time around. And uh, so I was really looking forward to see um, what you cooked up and, and where Tony and the gang were going to go. Um, right. You know, I feel like uh, this format is so unique and so interesting and, and challenging in its own ways, um, you know, as a as a performer. Um, so I, I I like that aspect of it as well. Um, so it was a, it was a welcome call to get um, in 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 many ways. Uh, so obviously, with that in mind, like when you wrote the Dispatch of the first Audible original, uh, you weren't sure who would be the voice of 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 the story. So did sure. that influence the second part at all? Like the experience that you had hearing the first one, or how how do you? What's unique about working in this space, I guess, is a, is a broader question. You know, it actually did matter. Um, when I was first writing it, the the voice I heard was the voice in my head. And yeah. I knew and I knew who Tony was. I knew what his values were. I knew what his situation was. Um, but uh, when you took hold of it, your particular way of phrasing what Tony was thinking or what was going on in the universe at the time makes a real impact. And as a writer, having the narrators come in is always a little bit weird because you're so used to hearing a voice in your head, right? Mm -hmm. You are so used to, to knowing what it is that you are hearing the character be inside the confines of your own brain. And here comes somebody else uh, who <sighs> does their own take of it. And sometimes it's a um, positive thing. Sometimes it's unsettling because that's like, I would not have chosen those particular uh, choices that the audio person makes. Mm -hmm. But in the case of your performance of it, um, I found that it was just, it was basically, it felt like you were sliding right into uh, the character and you were actually revealing some aspects of his personality that I wasn't even particularly aware of. And that is super interesting one as a writer to have a performer um, 
make more of the character than was there already. Um, and then when the second time came around to, uh, you know, recognizing that there was a very good chance that you would do it again, uh, hearing your voice and hearing that performance in my head meant that I had a, a touchstone for mm -hmm. where Tony was going and what Tony was going to do. So, yeah, you actually had a, a huge influence on the way that it was written. Well, so that's yes, cool. well done. You. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's, uh, that's really nice to hear. And I could feel that actually in the second version of, um, of the story, you know, I, I felt maybe it's because I had, uh, you know, already done one, but I, I felt a right. sense of the character, um, you know, broadly considering and, um, you know, figuring out the situation. And I, it was it was quite fun to read and uh, mm -hmm. really satisfying. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Because because I have to say, for me, um, knowing the second time around that it was very likely to be you that was going to be narrating it, and I was super glad when they confirmed it. I was like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, who else are you going to get? Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing for me is um, I'm actually really interested in how you approach Tony and and also the fact that you are approaching this character not only as this is a character that you're playing, but this is a character who is also describing the world, who is narrating right. as well as being who he is. And and how does that process, how is that process different? And what is your take on Tony? I feel like, you know, uh, voice work in general is an entirely unique skill set in in that you only have sort of one tool in the toolbox to work with, right? Tony's a very kind of um, I find sort of implacable uh, character. You know, he he even when things get intense and uh, there's a lot of upheaval and chaos in his life, as there invariably is, um, sure. he he doesn't he doesn't crack under pressure. Um, for, for, in my estimation, you know, he, uh, he is, um, he's pretty even, um, and, and that helps because it kind of creates a reserve of energy and allows for places to go in different parts of the, the story. It, it is a very different process. And, uh, you know, I would say preparation really is the kind of foundation of, any vocal narration like this um it's it's a it's a lot i don't know that people understand really um just how long it takes you know like how and so mm -hmm. protecting my voice and making sure that i have the stamina to to keep going you know um it's a it's a really unique process and one that i i enjoy i enjoy the challenges of it and uh in particular when i feel the kind of connection that i do to your writing and and the world that you created it's um it's really fun it's a cool experience for me it's very similar in the sense of when i started writing for audio i was i became very aware that the medium is different and that you do have to write differently for this particular medium than you do for another i mean yeah. one very simple example is uh, prior to, you know, my books really becoming an audio book thing, um, I would use the dialogue tag said at the end of almost every dialogue sentence. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in print, it's fun because your brain just sort of eventually skips over it. But you have to read every single thing that yeah. I put into the text. Yeah. Um, so all the saids begin to to stack up. And so that was one of the things that just for audio in general, um, I was super, uh, I became super aware of. And it I had to literally change the way that I uh, wrote and to some extent my style. And mm -hmm. then also with the dispatcher in particular, um, being aware that you needed to be the person who is going to describe things and to, you know, make the point of, hey, this is where your attention should be. Uh, while you're listening, um, it made me actually much more um, spatially aware uh, mm -hmm. of where things were or where um, the dialogue was going to go because you're out there as a narrator, you're out there pretty much all by yourself. As you said, it's like you and you and the engineer uh, mm -hmm. and no, no help is coming. My job as the writer is to give you 
all the information that you need so that you can do a good job so that the the listeners um, don't uh, get lost uh, in what's happening at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Now, I have a question for you. Uh, the last time we did this stuff, it was the before times, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> when you were uh, narrating this particular uh, book, uh, you were narrating it during uh, during the quarantine. And uh, did that change mm-hmm. the way that you were doing your work? I mean, how how was it different putting this one together, um, given the you know the events of the world? Well, you know, actually, to be honest, it wasn't really that different. Um, We were originally supposed to record this much earlier in the year. um, And then obviously everything got derailed for a time um, during, you know, the height of lockdown. But once those restrictions eased up a bit and studios were able to return to operations under pretty strict um, sag after protocols that each studio had to meet. And once they met them, they could open again. And so, um, you know, they took my temperature every day when I got to work and, uh, you know, they, they, yeah, it was, it, there was hand sanitizer. I mean, the, obviously those kinds of things, but once I got into the studio, I was just in there and it was just, it was, it didn't feel any different than normal. Um, and it's, it's one of the things that I'm, uh, especially grateful for during this time is, um, you know, my voiceover work because I've I've either been able to go to the studio or um, technology is such these days that I've been able to um, set up kind of makeshift studios in the places that I've been living. And um, so I, I feel grateful for that. And, uh, and honestly, um, once the door shut behind me uh, and I started reading, I was able to kind of get lost in your world and not really think about all the things that were <laughs> happening in the real world, which was nice. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a um, psychologist named uh, Mahali Chicksmahali who talks about the concept of flow. Right, um, when you are so engaged with your work um, that the rest of the world just sort of falls away. Um, and I have to say, um, with everything that's been going on in the world right now, it's been really hard to get into work sometimes. But when you're there, and for me, when I'm writing uh, and having the world fall away, and all I'm focused on is uh, the on, on the world that I'm creating, it's made such a huge difference for sort of my um, almost mental outlook during this time sure. that yeah. that work is, is turns out to be really important during during difficult times. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I've am i been, I, I feel so grateful. I have a production company and I'm, I'm just so thankful every day that I have um, projects to put my creative energy into. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, which kind of brings up the, the question for me of, um, you just mentioned the whole idea of uh, not just the acting, but the narration, not only the narration, but the, uh, you have the production company. Um, mm-hmm. Has it been, has it been uh, uh, difficult to keep yourself uh, as busy as you want to be these days? I would be doing more than I'm doing, I think, under different circumstances in terms of, you know, I'd, I'd be shooting something or rehearsing something or, you know, ideally I was, I was planning to be back on stage in some capacity this year. Or so, but yeah, I mean, again, I feel like I've been developing a lot of projects in this time, um, pitching things, selling things. So yeah, I've been, I've been able to, to do stuff, maybe not as much as I would otherwise, but, um, more than more than it more than it could be so that's good the thing that that has been interesting for me is watching um like for example books have actually been thriving because people can take the books and home uh audio i think has been a a really interesting thing because so many people listen to them to from their commutes but there have also been uh the new things of people doing dramatic versions of audio or uh doing or doing different narrative lengths which is something that uh we're doing here because this is a novella length as opposed to a novel length right that there seems to be no matter what we're doing um, no matter what the circumstances at the time, uh, people sort of raise their game to find new ways to, uh, you know, get those get those performances out there and do and have those outlets for their creativity. Yeah, it's like 
be like water, right? Go where the go where the space is created for um, for content for um, for storytelling, and and I've definitely been engaging that stuff, you know, and uh, I've been working with Audible on some other projects as well, which has been really interesting, and um, you know, I feel grateful for that. I think people are open to different formats and you know, want to be engaged and entertained in a way. Um, back to the, the world of Tony and, uh, and, and dispatching. Um, do you, when you sure. imagine this world, do you feel like this is an alternate reality in the present? Or do you think mm -hmm. that this is sometime in the near future? You talk, um, you know, obviously Chicago plays a huge part of, uh, of sure. the, of the narrative and, so, so how do you imagine that? And um, what's your what's your relationship to time and to, um, you know, wh where we're rooted in this series? Sure. Well, uh, I imagine that it is taking place more or less in the same time frame as we exist right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's an alternate universe because ten years back or twelve years back now, an event happened. So basically, around two thousand eight people stopped being able to murder each other, right? right? And everything sort of proceeds forward from there. And it's really difficult to do that because I write science fiction generally, and it's much easier to write 1,500 years in the future where you can pretty much imagine whatever you want and nobody's going to be able right. to call you on it because we're, we're not going to be around for that. Whereas if you are writing in current time or just slightly altered time, um, people are going to be really focused on the things that you get wrong. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Chicago, and yeah. it's really super important to get the geography of Chicago right, or otherwise, you know, people from Chicago are like, what on earth are you doing putting the Field Museum there? That's not where the Field Museum is. And I'm fortunate I went to the University of Chicago uh, for undergrad, and I spent a lot of time there, and I still love the city. It's basically my favorite American city. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, it was. it's easy to have it rooted there, and it's easy to have it rooted in current time. But it is fun to play with things. Like in the first book, um, there, uh, the skyscraper where uh, Tony has his little event. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't listened to it yet. Um, but that is literally a parking lot in the loop area right now. Uh -huh. And the, and they make reference to, well, this used to be this used to be my favorite parking lot, but now it's a skyscraper. Right. And the people. And maybe three people in Chicago will get that, but those right. three people in Chicago are going to be super happy about that. So you do. Right. You need to do a lot of research. Um, you need to get the you need to get the things that are correct, correct. And but you do also have to build out the universe so that you know if this is an event that happened ten years ago or twelve years ago, everything that comes forward from that. Um, the consequences are going to change the world, and so you have to you have to pretend the world has been this way um, for a decade, and that is that's a lot of that's that's a lot of work. Right, right. You're acting. Do you when uh, when you are doing something and you are the performing, um, you're not just thinking about the character, are you? I mean, you're also thinking about the wider world and the context of the character. Are you not? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Um, you know. I always, I always was presented with the definition of acting being uh, truthful behavior in imaginary circumstances. So, you know, really um, embracing what those imaginary circumstances are and um, engaging them on all levels, you know, um, it, it, it is, you know, it's a stranger process when, you know, I'm on the, on the bridge of a spaceship and, you know, going, <laughs> warp speed through the universe but uh you know the, the process varies it depends you know whether it's a it's a a person who's rooted in um you know who, who's a, an earthbound kind of person in in a contemporary uh, modern setting or a historical figure versus something that's more fantastical or you know supernatural or stylized i've, I've had the opportunity to kind of do it all and uh yeah, I enjoy the process on a case by case basis, really. Um, well, I was going to say, let me ask you about that with Tony because Tony is kind of the both of those. It is, it's taking place in basically 
20, you know, in the, in the, you know, early part of the 21st century, sure. but it does have this incredible, fantastical element, which is yeah. uh, the dead come back when you, when you try to murder them. So how do you balance the mundane world um, with that really fantastical element um, and keep those in balance? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, in, in an audio format, you know, it, it's about, uh, it's about taking the situation at face value and understanding that Tony operates in this world um, according to the rules of the world. And by the second book, obviously has um, had time and experience in this world. So I don't think that, uh, I don't think that there's anything that, that throws him per se. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really about commitment. I mean, it's really about, uh, understanding the rules that the characters are playing by and making sure that they're supported and informed, um, which, uh, which is, uh, you know, a unique challenge to this particular medium. And what do you think sure. it is about this, you know, so, so this is, as you mentioned, a novella length audio, um, book, right. audible original. So how, what lends itself to that format, uh, as opposed to a full length story? For me, I think part of it is um, I like the idea of um, mystery or uh, almost a noir, because this is almost a noir. I'm yeah. um, kind of being short and sweet and to the point. I don't think that uh, a lot of, for example, florid description or a lot of, uh, you know, meandering here and there uh, is really on point for something that is essentially uh, you know, a murder mystery, right. uh, not uh, ironically a murder mystery in a world where murders can't happen, but you see what I'm, where I'm going with that. Sure. Um, this is a, this is a type of story that needs to be moving, keep going. You know, we're, we don't have time to dilly around. So in that sort of sense, having a, having them be short, and sweet and to the point uh, really sort of supports the story rather than distracts from it. Now, there are other stories that I've written that definitely need to be novel length, where you really do have to delve into things. But um, the whole hit the ground running, we'll, you know, we'll explain it as we go along, but you need to keep up sort of thing, I think is part of the charm of it. You know, yeah. that is part of the thing that people really like about it. It's the idea of also that you tell the story to the length that the story needs to be sure. rather than tell the story to the length that you're contractually specified. And one right. of the things that we are very, very fortunate about is to be living in an era because of electronic delivery of things where um, novellas, which used to be a, a, a sort of dead zone in terms of being able to sell them and that, be able to share them with people, has really taken form, not only in audio, but also in print. People really like that length of things. You know, it's a, it's the you're going on a date, but it's not a commitment sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, I, and I think that that's really kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, let me flip that back to you. I mean, you are uh, you have uh, narrated full length audio and you have narrated uh, novellas. Um, what are sort of the quantitative and qualitative differences for you as a performer? Well, for me, it's about, um, I really like the idea that, you know, in the, in the shorter form, it feels like the stories can keep unfolding. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're contained. They're, they're almost little kind of chapters of, this world and these characters, which I quite like, and and you can evolve relationships and um, and things over a longer period of time, which I think in especially this format is really appealing, you know, for people. Um, so uh, I, I I appreciate that and recognize the ways in which you know this format lends itself to this particular particular story. So um, so yeah, that which brings me to I guess kind of my my ultimate question. Um, uh, do you do you feel like the, that you have more dispatcher in you? Do you feel like there's more stories to tell here? And have you started to hatch any of them? Or are you waiting to see how it all unfolds? I, I don't want to give away too much, but okay. the answer is yes. But the answer is yes. I'm very definitely thinking about uh, more stories in the dispatcher universe. And I don't think it's a... Uh, a um, something that I'm not able to speak about that, in fact, I have uh, 
signed with uh, Audible to do at least one more adventure in the universe. So Tony will definitely be back. And, and uh, you know, if all, if all all the stars align, um, that will be out uh, in the not too distant future. I don't think it'll be another four years before Great. we find out what Tony's up to. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing where it all goes. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet you finally. And, uh, and I feel really grateful for the opportunity to work with you. And, um, and, and it's just been great to, to chat about Murder by the Means. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. And you can listen to Murder by Other Means on Audible right now.